You touched on certain businesses um, taking on AI and, and really pushing it forward. I'm wondering whether I could gauge your opinion on whether that actually will be the sort of thing that lights the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, lights a sort of flame for the whole next phase of the revolution is whether or not there's a sudden click moment where people in manufacturing or people in construction suddenly realise, actually, I can make a lot of money if I offset... Um, yep. if I offset a cost initially on, on an advanced system and whether that will actually be, whether it won't be necessarily a, a technological advancement, it will literally just be a business of being like, actually, I can make a, t a ton of money. Yep. So one of the things about AI is that it's a really pervasive technology. So sort of the broad interest in AI is that actually you can look at most fields of endeavour, so most things that where you end up processing information and making decisions, which is, which is much of what we would do, and actually think that there is an AI angle to it. And so it's a really broad technology. I don't think there'll be a single moment where everyone goes, aha, this is, this is what I should be doing. But already you're start, we are starting to see sectors, and in some sectors it's stronger than others, who are adopting these sorts of technologies. So I see it making inroads really broadly around society, a uh, whole range of areas, not, but not, not at one time and at different speeds. Brilliant. So, so we had a second question in the middle, and then we'll, we'll come to you in a minute. Thank you very much. That was most informative. I wondered whether you could foresee a time when AI will be self-determined. In other words, it won't be limited by the human brain and its processing. And when that time comes, perhaps even before that time, how will the ethical dimension be arranged in relation to the advancement of AI? You mentioned all the changes in what seems to be a relatively short term, certainly in terms of my life. Mm -hmm. So one could imagine that at the rate of progress, we're going to reach that problem sooner rather than later. Thank you. Yeah, so the, there is debates, and um, if you had a different AI researcher standing here, you might get a different answer, but I'm going to give you my answer. So I think that sort of the move towards general intelligence, which is sort of the self-determination piece, is not going to happen in my lifetime. And I'm just looking at the age of some of the people in this room. I don't think it's going to happen in most of your lifetimes. <laughs> Now, when you think about sort of being limited to the human brain, let me take you back to the breakout example. So actually in that example, what you have is the, um, is the AI system learning to do, being programmed to learn stuff, and it's learned something that the developers hadn't seen before. So it needn't necessarily just be related to, to what we as, as human beings have the imagination to put into the system. But as I say, I think we're, I'm generally optimistic about uh, the future because the move from being good at something really narrow to being good at, at the, the millions of things that we would need to be able to do is something we just don't know how to do. And the, the breakout was one game. They showed uh, it playing other Atari-like computer games, and actually they had a separate, a separate learning system for each and every game. And if you think about your life in terms of sort of, you know, the granularity of different Atari games, think about your life into how many of those level, those breadth of things that you have to do, and that's what gives me confidence that we're, as a human race we're going to be okay for some, for some time. Oh, sorry, ethics, yeah. So really important. I think there are a huge number of ethical issues that are, that are thrown up uh, by this sort of technology. So you saw some examples of autonomous vehicles. I think sort of having autonomous vehicles on the road, so where cars are driving round routinely amongst us, I think that's going to happen. And that sort of brings in huge ethical issues around what we can automate, who we make responsible for that automation, what degrees of assurance we can have around that, that automation. So really important topic. I think it's starting to emerge as, as politicians and policymakers are starting to think about AI and, and machine learning, but sort of, you know, still a long way to go. 
What do you think the role of the Chief Executive Officer is here if we're talking about the loss of jobs, which will ultimately happen? Do they have a, a role to define um, how to protect and preserve the, the human element against um, shareholder returns and reducing and work through automation? Yeah, so my, uh, as I said, my, my take on the automation piece is that I see... I see AI augmenting in general. So I, I see it sitting alongside uh, what humans do. So if you think about sort of doctors and physicians, a small amount, actually a quite a small amount of their time is actually spent working out the diagnosis. That's a, that's a small part of what they do. And if that's automated or partially automated, and that gives them more time to discuss and have a discussion with a patient, then that's a, that's a good thing. So I don't think there's a, a direct substitutability between tasks that you can automate and jobs that can be lost. I, I think it, it can shift the balance in the way that many technology uh, revolutions have changed things. So sort of now... You know, my kids uh, can't do uh, uh, mental arithmetic in the way that I can because actually they've got a calculator. Sorry, Anna. Um, <laughs> and so sort of, you know, that's an example where the machine is really helping you and sort of taking you away from a routine thing that actually a machine's much better at than, than even someone of a certain age. Hi, it feels like uh, deep learning and neural networks are quite a young field still. Uh, it feels like people don't really understand how they work. There's lots of problems with uh, regularization and generalization and overfitting of models. Uh, do you think that things like driverless cars are going to be safe when there are people using these technologies too quickly without actually understanding how they work? Yep. So, so in, really interesting question. So, sort of deep neural networks being a specific form of machine learning. Interesting enough, if you go back far enough in in AI history, there used to be things that looked remarkably like deep neural networks that they were not deep but they were neural networks and sort of because we didn't have the processing power so sort of not a particularly new paradigm but now sort of the main thing now the big challenge for some forms of machine learning is actually you can't get the machine to explain why it has made a particular decision now in some cases that doesn't matter uh, and actually all you want is the performance out of it. But in other cases, what you want is some form of explainability. So when I showed the Rescue Global example in Nepal, actually the machine flavor of machine learning that we did, which is not deep neural networks, was able to give a potted explanation of you should go to this place and you should go here for, for these reasons. And so I think what's going to happen with uh, the deep neural network technology is that people are, are going to take explainability uh, very much more seriously, and that's a, that's a research topic. Now, in terms of sort of autonomous vehicles, I think giving assurance or the best assurance that you can about automation is a, is a really hot topic. And we have to remember here that actually humans are not fantastic at driving themselves. If you, if you think about the number of deaths on our road, then I think when we have proper automation, uh, it, driverless cars will bring that number down. I don't think it's going to bring it to zero. It's a low bar to Sorry? It's a low bar to cross. Yes, it is, yes. <laughs> what do you think the single biggest difference that uh, human AI partnerships will make on society in the next five years? I think that the main area and sort of where it will really make, sort of the, the high level area that it will really impact on is around productivity and sort of skills. So I think having, having the equivalent of a digital assistant working alongside you saying, you know, have you thought of that? Ooh, that looks a slightly peculiar way to do it. Why are you doing that? And sort of having that partnership together is is where these technologies are really good. And I think that, in general, will lead to increased productivity because we'll have more faith and more ability for the machines to, 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 to step up to the plate. And I think that will make us as humans uh, better at what we do, which is what I mean by the rise in the, in the human. So I think we as humans will be more uh, better able to process and do tasks because we're being augmented 
by smart technology. So I think that sort of productivity and increasing uh, skills is the, is the overarching thing that I would say. So do, does Her Majesty's government know about this, given that productivity is a big issue? In the yep, so the, the government uh, in the in industrial uh, strategy challenge fund, uh, which is sort of the government's big investment in, in new research and development, AI and robotics is one of the, one of the key technologies that, that's being addressed here. And so when I was in government, I used to be a chief scientific advisor. Actually, government is very well aware of the, of the potential in this area. Thank you. Can, can, can I just pick up on that? Because obviously you talked about productivity, but one of the main rising jobs is obviously around service, and that really is the interaction between, if you like, the robot or the machine and the person. How do you think we are, as a human race, actually going to cope with this kind of interface going forward? So uh, I think we really have to get used to the shift from viewing uh, computers as just, thing, just dumb things that only do things when they're asked to do something, so that sort of master-slave relationship, to partnership. So, you know, I've used partnership a number of times throughout there, and to me that implies a different form of social relationship between humans and machines. And now I think how that plays out and how that manifests itself to be determined, but I think sort of fundamentally different sort of relationship and dynamic needs to be needs to be understood um, in order to work with. And our experience with Rescue Global is actually their planners loved what we did with them. So it, they, they, they saw the benefit in terms of things that the machine was doing that actually they found quite tedious and quite difficult to do. And actually the machine doing them in a smart way that they could augment that made their lives easier and better. I think we have time for one more question. So... There was a young man up there. How about that? Oh, yes, let's go for you. I would like to ask: In which sector will drugs be lost and regained? Which jobs will be most affected? Which jobs will there be more partnerships in? Okay. Very good question. I wish I'd been able to think of a question when I was your age like that. Um, so uh, I think one of the types of job that's going to be most affected is um, a actually around movement and driving. So an awful lot of people are employed as drivers, as lorry drivers and taxi drivers. And I think sort of that is an area where, where jobs are going, the, the, land the employment landscape is really going to change. So I wouldn't encourage you to train to be a driver uh, because I think you might just be automated away. I think most, m many other sectors uh, are going to, to be the partnership model. And so I think the partnership is the big bit. I think the actual jobs that are going to be disappearing and not worth doing anymore is the smaller bit. And I, so I wouldn't train to be a, dr a driver at this point. Can, can, can I ask you a question? Is this something you discuss at school? Is this something you talk about at school? Not much, really. But, <laughs> but, but do you think it would be good to have that kind of a discussion with teachers? Yes. Brilliant. There you are. <laughs> so that, that's a lovely way to, to end the discourse. And, and, and can we again thank Nick for a most stimulating... Thank you.